Hi, hello, welcome back. All right, so this is where we ended the last time, and so we're going to be moving on to intermediate notes. So that was the last part on four parts on um, HTML basic, and now we're going to move into intermediate. But before we do, um, I'm going to just turn on the Git um, plugin here and um, commit uh, this file that we changed in the basic directory. And I'm just going to say commit, and I'm going to say, um, you know, end it with, you know, presentation tags or something. Okay, uh, whatever. All right, all right, so I'm just teaching you a little bit to get along the way. Um, and next time I'll do something, commit something from the command line for those people who are not using brackets and want to use a command line. So, okay, so that's basic. Now we're intermediate, okay? Um, we're looking at presentation tag when we're on. Um, doing basic stuff and so now we're going to start talking about the layout tags and so um, and This is going to be it's going to look like so this one is kind of weird The one we're going to talk about today, by the way, we're talking this is intermediate one part one and We're talking about the table tag today and so the table tag should really be in presentation also but because back in the days a long time ago um, the table tag served two purposes. It was uh, used for presentation and for laying out. And that's, you could say, argue, well, that's presentation too, right? How is this document structured or the content structured? But we'll see that the way in which it, it can be used, or it was used back then, um, because the table tag is so flexible, you could use it as a kind of like a grid system, okay? But let's, we'll get to that. And that's why I put the, the table tag in this intermediate part, and that's why I'm bundling it with the other presentation um, layout tags that we're going to cover, div and span. So section, editor, those other ones. Anyway, so let's just start with table. So you could see here, I started off with some contents. I didn't want to waste time, you know, me typing it up. So I, I put some um, text there, right? And so let's imagine that I had name, age, search, and the last four digits of social security number of some people. And I wanted to present it nicely in my HTML, you know, on a web page. Now, you could see I try and write it up here and I put some nice bars between and it looks good in the source. But, but when I put a markup and I render it, even without the markup, and if I try to re render it, the web browser simply doesn't respect um, my new line or my spaces, right? You know, how many, it doesn't matter how many spaces or tabs I put here my web browser is still not, you know, respecting it and rendering it properly. So fortunately, table comes to the rescue. So let's create a table and put this in a table. So again, as you before, we're going to learn what we need to learn as we go along. So I'm not going to explain too much until we need to do it. So table tag. And so every tag, you put the Opening tag and a closing tag. Open tag is a less than that. I'm going to stop mentioning that because I think you guys are going to see the pattern and know it by now. And so with a table tag, you have uh, essentially a row and then cells. So how do you find a row? You said table row. So that's the table. Um, that's how you define one row at a table. And so for each row, you can have a cell. And so here's a cell. You said table data. That's how you define a cell. And so you can say name goes into this cell. And um, age go into this cell. Oh, we had another table data. And we said this is going to be age. And we do another table data because this is a cell. Another table, each table data maps to a cell. Okay? So that's how you define one cell in that row. So table data, cell, and so security number, you know, last four digits or something. Last four digits okay and um, so look at that that's showing up there but up to so far it doesn't look any different than what I had above right so or what I really want here so I'm gonna put this in a comment because I said this is kind of like what we want to have and so uh, let's keep it there for kind of like reference to see what is it that we want and then we we'll try and make this kind of renders that way of course, without this. And actually, we can get it to render better because we can put some line all along it. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Borders. All right. So if this is uh, one or a first row, and you can see when I click here, it highlights that row. And this is you know, one cell, the other cell, another cell. 
and here is the row. Well, I want a second row. So table row, then table data, and what goes into the cell? John Doe, the other cell is table data 35, the other cell is table data uh, 1, 2, 3, 9. Okay, and we can repeat, rinse and repeat. <laughs> Come on, all right, table data, table row, and I actually use an editor, another editor when I code as, instead of uh, brackets. I use bracket because there's this live preview that we, we, we get, but it's annoying. It doesn't do all the beautification and it's not terribly smart on certain things. But anyway, table data, no complaining, it's free. Um, Jane Smith, and notice what happened just now. When Smith was so long, too long, it was longer than the previous col um, values in that same column. Right, this is a column, row, and then each one a cell. Notice how it pushed over the entire thing. Let me type something else and see. see. Uh, so the table is taking care of that nice formatting for me, and um, so I don't have to pad it with spaces. It's automatically doing it for me. And so 21, I think I have up there. Uh, 21, and then close that table data. Table data, 21, 21. And then table data, uh, 9031. Okay, so already you can see it how the table is kind of structuring our information a little better than what we had. Now, before it would have been nice to have um, these things bolded or something, right? You know, these are the heading for the table. We can have those bolded, that would be nice. And so we can do that too. So let's do that. Let's change these table data to just th so table header and so the table th is just like a table data except that instead of you having to so the other way of accomplishing the same thing would be to do this to put bold around here and right and you get the same result, but now you have to use two tags. You have to use this table data and then nest inside of it um, a bold tag. It just seems like, you know, just go ahead and use the table header tag, which gives you the same exact result. Okay, table, table header. And so, bam, there you go. Um, so we got, so far, we have um, our table with a nice header and some, some, um, you know, two rows in it. Um, some other things you can do. So um, that was pretty simple, right? Uh, the other thing we can do is say, you remember attributes? We talked about attributes before, but we didn't really have to use them. But one attribute of the table uh, we can say is border equals to one. And so, um, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, why is that? Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe I should use a style. Let me see style equals uh, so border one. Let me see px. Hmm. I want a border on my table. Why, why is that not showing up? It's supposed to be able to say border equals one and have the border show up. Okay. Yeah, that's what I expect. Ah, now it shows up. Ah, save. Okay. So notice how <laughs> it puts a border around everything. So just by saying border equals one, I don't know what happened, why it didn't do it the first time I typed it. So that's similar to what I was trying to do here with, with a border. Of course, I, I didn't want to put some before and after, but I mean, I could have tried and say by doing, you know, something like dash lines and then a plus here, and then dash line, and a plus. But you see how much work I have to do to just get, get it to look even decent. And here, I can just say border equal one, and I get a border um, put inside. And um, 
there's some other things you can do too. You can do like um, cell, I think padding. Uh, I don't know if it's two words like that or cell padding equals, I think, uh, let's say 10 px or 10 pixels, right? And so now each cell, if you remember, a cell is one of these table data, right? This guy is padded by 10 pixels all around. So top, bottom, right? You know, top is 10 pixels, bottom is this. So it's 10 pixels padded, hence why it looked like the table kind of swelled up and suddenly got fat. <laughs> uh, you, know, you can do five, you can do 20, whatever makes sense for you, right? Now, we're gonna learn later when we get into CSS, how you can just pad the top or the left alone or the right, that sort of thing. But so those are two quick things you can do, cell padding and border. Um, and so I hope this quickly showed you how to do a table. Remember, the table tag, open and closing table tag, and then you nest between, inside of it the row tags, a certain number of rows you want. And then within each row, you can do table data for each cell on that row. And then you can do table head if you wanted to give it a nice bold and so on. And you can, of course, put more, um, you know, table data tags here. So you see it's going to add another cell over there. Um, so it's up to you. And maybe this is data board or something like that. I don't know. Whatever that's going to be. I ain't able to do any calculations, but whatever, right? And so um, you could put another cell. Um, of course, it's, it's not a nice even table, but nice square table. But yes, there's nothing wrong with some rows having more cells than other. It's just going to be, you know. And then there are ways in which you can put, you know, with multiple cells in one column. So if you wanted to split this row, for example, you can do things like that. Um, it's called row span and column span so that you can combine two things. Um, let me see what the time look like here um, because I don't want to run over. Um, okay, so that um, is, I think, enough for this video. Show you how to use um, the table tag and with header, with a table header. Um, tag also so you can have bolded um, cells and you know if you want you can go to the reference here and look up table tag and actually see a few more examples of some things other things you can do uh, with a table tag okay um, there's some other Tags you can use inside the table, like T body and T head. You can play with that. Um, so this is just a basic example to get you, you know, get you going. Um, we, I can't show you everything. Um, one, because I don't know everything is one. And two, uh, it's just enough to know something exists and where to find the rest of the information. So as you build out your application and your website and so on, you can say, oh, I can go look and see what else I can do, um, you know, uh, in my, for my table or in using a certain tag. Okay, so that's it. And thank you for your time. And we'll continue looking at some more um, layout. To, again, this one is still kind of presentation, but you could see, before I go, you could see how somebody... Um, Hope somebody could, without border here, so you could see the line, could use this to lay out a table, um, a website, for example, um, that might need, you know, a bunch of cell. So uh, let's say CNN, maybe, I don't know, or a newspaper website where you might have well-structured information, um, nytimes.com, right? Um, so you might use a table to create these different little pockets here okay at least sell so um so that's what people used to use it for okay use in addition for you know just laying out information but they also presentation information they also used to use it for the structure and actual structure of the, the website and later on we got some better tools and tags for doing structure in the website so people hardly use table now for it uh, but i hope you get the gist of it take care and i'm for the time run over, 
Thanks and see you in the next video. In HTML Intermediate Part 2 is the next video. This is Part 1. Thanks for your time. Bye.